Hi, so the video ASCII went very well. I had Thomas, one of Deb ki Deb's kids, so he was six years and two months old. Um, I got the consent form. So this is the consent form from Deb. <laughs> um, so basically Thomas, it was his second attempt doing the ASCII. He did it with Kayla uh, a couple days before. So he was very silly at times. He already did all, everything, so he knew what to do. He didn't really want to listen to me with my instructions and seemed like he w wanted to play. He wanted to do a lot of gross motor activities rather than stay stationary and do listen to instructions, especially after a school day. So starting with the jumping jacks, he was able to perform all of them. Um, when it was hard to like read the instructions out because you already know what to do with it and I thought like rather than be like robotic and read like the exact standardized assessment um just to build a rapport with him it was easier just to do fluent natural conversation with him I rather have had maybe the standardized assessment like memorized in my head so I didn't have to have it like sitting right next to me but at the same time, I couldn't really go off of it anyway. I had to just interact and respond how he was um, acting in the jumping jacks. So he was able to perform all of them. Um, he was good. He had the coordination, bilateral integration with everything. So for the jumping jacks, I gave him a five. He got a jumping jack was five, so he got a score of a three. Um, for the bilateral coordination with that. He had good range of motion, um, he had proper reception, and overall he just did a good job with the jump jacks. He's very fluid in his movements. Um, next we had the catch and throw. This was actually a little bit of a disaster. He didn't really want to listen to me he too much. He just seemed like the camera was there so he was a little distracted. Um, but he was definitely good at initiating what he wanted to do. He wanted to throw overhand, so, you know, instead of teaching him to throw underhand, he's more comfortable with overhand, so I did use that. Um, but it seemed like he didn't know how to grade his movements too well. He was throwing way too hard, and I don't know if that was just because he was being silly and the camera, or he honestly just didn't know how to. But when we were doing, um, when he was catching, he was using two hands like I told him to do. So he was following the directions. And he had the good eye-hand coordination. Um, he wasn't able to catch too well. And it turned into a bit of silliness. So um, that was a little hard. But he has good range of motion, good strength overall. Um, probably good endurance with the jumping jacks and everything. But... Um, before we sat down, I tried to like get him to jump around and stuff, just try to get his silliness out because he seemed like very silly, distracted with the camera. And I didn't want that to interfere with then having to do assessment where you actually have to sit. So then when we drawn the lines, um, number three, number four. So with this, I gave him a red pencil. What happened was I told was told from people in class that we had a red pencil in our lab kit so I took that out not even thinking and brought my pencil to sharpen it I even gave it to him without even thinking that it actually didn't write in red ink it was a normal pencil it was just red so I wish I would have tested to make sure it actually wrote in red pen and not just thinking I oh, here's a red pencil this is what I need so that's what happened with that so basically with him, I saw there was, he had four errors with drawing the line. And they basically were around where he had to get to the fine, precise movements with the, um, the pointed edges. So that was a problem. Um, when, with this one, um, he had more. So this one, he had nine when he came out of the line, except... Through this right here, he actually started to color in the lines. So that was not a specific of what he could have got. He could have got more wrong in that coloring part. 
but this just goes to show that you know this one might be a little harder than this one because this one has more straight lines where this one is all like curvature so uh, we know that you know cut in straight lines is a step below doing like complex circles so maybe it's the same with tracing it's easier to have that in hand manipulation of just going straight than having to do the rotation and um with your hand to get around the circles so that was that let's see if i missed anything um yeah. Oh, also it shows like how he was holding the pencil. So he did use, he was able to use manipulation with his hand. He didn't have a stat, um, a dynamic tripod grasp. He still kind of seemed like he used his fourth finger, but, um, it was kind of hard to see. I kind of was really trying to take a look at it, but it looks like he still uses his fourth finger, maybe just to help stabilize or help guide. Um, um, yeah, he would use translation to bring the pencil the pencil um, down through his finger so he's able to move through translation. Um, and his web space, he had a good open web space. Um, so overall, hand manipulation was good. He was able to uh, uh, rotate. Um, so with the draw on the lines, the connecting the dots, what happened here was he... Um, he was able to follow the, the lines except he stopped going in sequence. He started from here to here to here and then came back from here and did that. So I should have stopped and made him try to do the whole thing again, but he was just way silly and didn't want to be bothered. You know, was more interested in drawing in this. He already did it, like I said, so um, it was you know, hard to get him to do these things. Plus he said this stuff was boring. So it's kind of hard. I mean, I could have made this more fun, but at the same time it was a standardized test. I don't want him to get too silly and then not cooperate at all. So basically if you're going to guard, if I graded it, like he went in order, um, I would say he lifted the pen paper pencil twice. So, and he was able to stay in the dotted line when I ha put the trace on. So, um, I gave him a 3 for all, so he got a 12, but minus 2, so he got a 10 with connecting the dots. Um, so that was that. Um, he went out of sequence. Um, and then, I, like, again, there's no red pencil. I gave him the red pencil, but he didn't use that. Um, folding the paper. Um, this was really hard to score for him. Just I had to draw the lines to grade because he couldn't really see what the fold in. Um, like again, he was getting silly, um, you know, so it'd be interesting to actually see like how I could have performed this if he didn't know the assessment in the beginning. Um, because then if you ever want to like retest this, you're doing it at a longer period of time. So he might listen to you, but you know, he still probably thinks I'm a student, so doesn't want to listen to me, I guess. <laughs> but um, he still was able to follow direction. He still listened to me. I told him to do the one, then the other two. So he still, and then the middle. So he was still able to listen to me. Um, seems like he has a good, uh, memory because he said, I know how to do this and was kind of doing it all on his own, but he was able to concentrate. He used bilateral integration. Um, he had like a pincer grass to pinch it through. Um, and he was working at midline position to do all this work. Um, so basically when I was grading this, I gave a zero for this one, a zero for this one, a three and a three. So I gave him a six. So with the grading scale for the bot, the jump and jacks, like I said, I gave him a five. Um, the draw on the lines, he got a four, so he was in the four to five. So he got a four on that. The draw on the... The errors, he got a 9, so I gave him a 3. The connecting dots, he got a 10, so I gave him a 5. And the fold in the paper, um, he got a 6, so I gave him a 3. So I couldn't really add it up, though, because not everything was completed. But those are the numbers I would have gave him. So overall, he did very well, but his concentration wasn't all there and his silliness and being able to do it and having the camera in front of his face, I think, had a hindrance in that. So then it came to the VMI. So overall, 
Like again, he did well in the VMI. Um, I tried to give him the pencil with a number two pencil without the eraser, but he wanted the red pencil. So I said, you know, you can have the red pencil, but as soon as I went to turn my head for a second, because he already completed this and he already said it was easy to put the other pencil down, he completed the first three boxes without me giving the instructions. So it's kind of like, oh, well, what you're going to do? He already did it. So let's go on and try to give the instructions the second time, but maybe not give him the pencil before I read the instructions or don't open the booklet before I read the instructions would have been a better idea. But I tried to tell him to calm down, but he was still very silly. Um, yeah, so that's that one. So, yeah, so he didn't want to listen to me. He covered his ears right sometimes, but he was still listening because I said, can you hear me? He said, And he shook his head, yeah. So you could still hear me, but I think he was just trying to be um, a little goofy, and I don't think he wanted to sit there. I think he wanted to do something active, which is okay. Um, and then also I had to use, like, a reward system to him, like, all right, the sooner we get this done, the sooner we can go and play something else, and then that's when he would engage and do something on his own. Also, when where he was sitting, I actually would have actually looking at his position. I would have wanted him in a higher chair because he was uh, right in like this instead of right in like this. So his he didn't have a good functional position. His shoulders um, were too um, abducted and. Um, just not in a comfortable position to help help stabilize him and help with the right end. So it's just uncomfortable. Um, so yeah, so, and also when he was doing this, he was able to use his left hand to help stabilize when he was right in. So that was good. So I didn't have to help stabilize him to do anything. So basically when he was doing this, um, the first one he did well, the second one, and third one he did well for those, so I gave him the point. Um, these I gave him the point as well, so he got a point for all those. He got a point for this one. He didn't get a point for the X because the lines weren't long enough. He, they didn't meet the correct dimensions long enough. Um, this one, he got the point. This one, he didn't get the point. He was had the overlap between the square and the circle. This one, he got the point. This one he didn't get the point because they were not, the errors aren't touching. And then this one he didn't get the point here because there was only one circle um, instead of two circles at the top. This one he just kind of got a little too silly and didn't really draw s circles as much. He was connecting the dots. And then this one he didn't get the point because he wasn't they weren't touching. So he ended up getting nine out of um, nine points. So his standard score was a 65. So he was in the one percentile, which I don't think he is in the one percentile of like visual motor, um, visual perceptual skills. And, um, so yeah, I just, I don't think he's there. I don't think the standardized test, um, proves his actual ability. And also at the same time, he got silly at the way end. So he was just like rushing through. He's actually rushing through the whole Thing and not really concentrating and taking his time. Um, he already did it. So when you already do something and you know you're fine with it, it's kind of boring. And plus, he's a six-year-old, so you know doesn't have the biggest attention span. Wants to jump around and play, like which he should be doing. Um, so basically, that was it for that. So overall, like the experience, it was a really good experience um, performing like an actual assessment on someone else that wasn't a classmate who understands what's going on. I wish I would have been able to do the assessment um, with him first, but you know, but ha it happens. Um, he was very silly. Um, um, 
also it was really hard to do specific instructions so since there was actual specific instructions that you had to follow I wish I could have followed them but the way we were interacting and things were going it was really hard to do like the standard let me read you the instructions like word for word I just had to go off of what was happening but I wish I could have done that a little better and I wish I could have um, just stopped and said, listen, all right, I'm going to give you instructions. And then after I say the instructions, um, I'll have you do this one or something because he needed more structure than me kind of letting him take control. Um, but at the same time, not having the standardized instructions and able to just flow naturally, was able to build a better rapport with him. So he was able to feel more comfortable with me during the assessment, which I think is more important. Um, um, overall, I think I'm a pushover. <laughs> he seemed to get like what he won. I just, you know, he was already silly. He already didn't want to do this. So I didn't want to hit to have a uh, power struggle with him at all with anything I wanted to get done. So I like with the red pen, I let him use the red pencil over having the other one, um, for the VMI. Um, but basically, I want to be a little bit more prepared to have more discipline, have him calm down, get more strategies to be like, all right, let's breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, let's, let's smell this, and let's act like we're blowing out candles just to have it more fun, just to have him maybe settle down a little bit more. Or maybe I uh, could have actually did one assessment sitting down and then throwing the ball in between just to have, instead of doing both assessments, sitting down at the same time at the end. Um, also the grading scale for these was a little subjective. Um, it was really hard. Like, does this one count? Does this one not count? But, um, overall it wasn't terrible grading, but still I thought was, um, kind of subjective. So when it got to the activity of painting pumpkins, I thought it was a good activity for them because, um, it is fall, so you know, build a rapport with them, talk about what they like, normally fall. And pumpkins um, brings kids to think about Halloween, so they can talk about what they're gonna wear. So just build a rapport with them and just get to know them and see what they like. And it's an important part um, of occupational therapy. Um, so basically it seemed like Catherine was this Pain and pumpkins was more appropriate for Catherine. She seemed to be like more precise with her um, painting. She was actually her. I never showed it, but she was actually writing words like "boo" and she um, was making butterflies. So she had more like precise movements, and she was actually doing like um, you know handwriting stuff and th handwriting things and things like that. Um. But basically, there you know there wasn't a lot of slides. You need some paint, some brushes, and the pumpkin, um, a large space. You wanted I wanted to lay stuff down so it wasn't as messy. Um, but basically, I just wanted them to be creative and have fun and interact with me through play and just bring up what they like. Um, and also like because they were both working together, so like social participation as well. Um, they had, a, you know, they had only one set of paint and they were had to share. There came problems when Thomas would like dip the same ones, but um, wasn't terrible. Um, but that, you know, they Catherine was very attentive. Thomas was very attentive. They both were, you know, diligently working. They had different ideas of painting a pumpkin, but it's still, it was their own creativity, whatever they wanted to do. They had to do different region. They had to add range of motion, strength. Um, they had different gra uh, grasp in the brush, so they had to manipulate the brush. So they used translation sometimes, um, rotation, but Thomas actually used two hands to rotate. So instead of doing a 360 degrees or 180 to rotate the brush, he would actually do, um, I don't know, like 180 and then use the other hand to flip the rest of it out to put it back in his hand. So he didn't have the full rotation and hand manipulation. He... Um, not that he can't, but he chose chooses not to. He's more comfortable not. Um, so also cross across the midline to get the paint. Um, you know, sit in a chair, balance, um, stability. Um, so he saw his independence. He wanted to. to um, 
he wanted to wipe off his own brush, so he wanted to be independent of that. He didn't want me to do it. He wanted me, though, to still rotate his pumpkin, but I think, I don't know, he just needed a little help. I didn't mind helping him for that part of it. Um, with this tripod grass, they still had, like, om almost a dynamic um, tripod grass. He still kind of uses his fourth finger to help, like, stabilize, but <clears throat> he did have um, proper open wide space, so he did have a lot of that. The visual, so work, it could work on like visual motor skills of him actually doing the painting. Um, what else? Also, um, it was like mixing of the colors, so he was understandable of like blue and green, blue and yellow makes green. So we were, you know, that was one thing we were able to talk about, like not having the variety of colors. Um, at one time, he started like drawing a face, so he did have the body awareness, facial awareness. Um, when that came into play. <clears throat> um, but basically, he, he, it was definitely, this was definitely better with Catherine over Thomas. Um, she seemed more focused and attentive to it than him. But, but basically, you can do a lot with pumpkins. You can work on handwriting. It's visual motor, visual perceptual. Um, you could have gave him stuff to follow directions. So basically, to grade up, I could have made them copy an actual picture. So here's a picture, let's try to copy it. So that gives like the visual, um, perceptual as well as visual motor down. Um, I could have used like different small brushes. So that could have made you have to use like more in hand manipulation. So rotation, um, stuff like that dependent on, <coughs> sorry, um, dependent on how tiny they were and, and how to manipulate and enhance the translate rotate shift um grading down i could use st stickers um sponge i could use sponges to do just like different dots with big sponges um or like with your fingers i could use finger paint but overall it was good experience i think they had a fun um it was messy but everything was, everything was clean. I just had to make sure everything was laid out. But I just wanted them to um, enjoy something. And now it's something they physically made. So they feel like an accomplishment. And now it's something that can be on their porch. And um, when they come home, they can think they made that so they can be proud of themselves. And it was just a time for play and creativity and fun. So overall, it went really well. And that's it. All right. Bye, I'll see you next week. <laughs>